Hi there, second grade. This is our small reading story. Um, we do have an exit ticket today, and I wanted to talk to you about that because the genre is not where it usually is. Um, this is a shared read. It's from A Time for Kids, which is kind of like a scholastic news. It's like, I keep saying like, it's a, a newspaper article of sorts. It's called Visiting the Past, The Essential Question, The Purpose for Reading that I want you to think about while you're reading is why are the rules so important? We're going to read about how America became an independent country and developed its own rules. And we're going to follow a family called the Changs as they visit Philadelphia. And we're going to learn a little bit about that, the history of Philadelphia and why Philadelphia is so important in American history. But back to the genre, I'm going to have you turn in your small reading textbook. Um, you should be on page 390 for the story, but if you go back to uh, page 396, you can copy on your exit ticket the word expository text. We've done a lot of expository text stories. It's an informational text, which means a nonfiction, not fake. You're going to learn from this story. Okay. This story will give you facts and information about a topic. So the topic is American history, and you're going to learn a lot of different facts and learn some information. I know Eli out there knows a lot about American history, and a lot of you have learned history from our friend Mrs. Reeves as well. Often expository text has photos. They often have captions, which are words next to photos or a diagram that tell more information about that photo or diagram. They can have diagrams, which is um, more of a picture or a photograph with um, lines to them. A lot of times our Scholastic News will have diagrams of maybe an animal and pointing to the different parts of animals. They can also have charts. Often we kind of look past those text features and you don't want to do that. These charts and captions and photos give us a lot of information about what we're reading. And sometimes we have questions and they directly come from those different text features like photos and captions and charts. So make sure you're looking at all those different pieces and parts of a story and take the time when you're done reading as well, um, a paragraph or so, to look at the photographs. Um, here's an example of a chart that's in your story. That's a kind of text feature, just like photos a kind of text feature, captions and charts also. A chart is a list of facts or information that is shown in rows. So we've had these charts before in expository text. The music um, unit had quite a bit of charts. When we learned about wild weather, there was a chart about safety. If there's a tornado warning or watch and what you do. So you know those charts were really important when reading and you want to make sure that you take a look at those as well. So expository text is the genre you're going to write on your exit ticket today. And back to the story, we're going to go ahead and get started and learn about the past. Time for Kids. Visiting the Past. On the 4th of July, skies across the United States light up. It's Independence Day. The holiday celebrates the Declaration of Independence. In 1776, this statement was written to tell the King of England that the colonies were free from his rule the colonies would be united to form a new country together. Janet Chang, 8, recently visited Philadelphia with her family. Philadelphia was the first capital of the United States. The Changs went there to learn about their country's history, or past. Busy building. First, they went to Independence Hall. That's where the Declaration of Independence was signed, Janet exclaimed. She was excited to be there. The Changs visit Philadelphia. All right, so good readers are able to stop and think. What did we just read? Many of you might not realize that Philadelphia, which is in Pennsylvania, not too far from Ohio, is the first capital of the United States before Washington, D.C. was the capital. There's a lot of American history in Philadelphia. I do believe the Washington, D.C. trip might stop in Philadelphia. I know mine did in high school. I'm not sure if Bath's does or not. 
But already the Changs have seen something pretty cool and that's Independence Hall. Independence Hall is where the group of men who wrote the um, Declaration of Independence signed the Declaration of Independence. And what that is, we declared or we stated, we said, hey England, King of England, we are not going to be a part of your country anymore. We're not going to follow your rules and pay you money. We want our own country. We want our own rules. And that's why we came to America. So we are now our own country. And that was in 1776. And that is where Independence Day, July 4th, um, became a holiday. Because on July 4th, 1776, it's where we had a group of men who were unified sign the Declaration of Independence. So it's a very important part of our history. Moving on, go ahead and turn the page. Make sure you look at these photographs and all of these text features, charts, all that good stuff. And we're going to go ahead and get reading. Ten years after the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution was written in Independence Hall. The writers of the Constitution created new rules for the country. Rules are important. They help to keep order in a country and give people rights. One new rule was the people could state their opinion. Ringing for Freedom The Changs later visited the Liberty Bell. It is said that the famous bell rang on July 8, 1776. That's when the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence took place. The bell also chimed to announce important events, such as when a president was elected, the signers of the Declaration of Independence. So you can see there was quite a few people, um, all gentlemen, all men, who were signing the Declaration of Independence. Women did not have the right to um, be a part of the government at that time. This Liberty Bell is something we have talked about in social studies class. Um, we learned, I believe Eli told us how it was fixed a couple times and then it broke and they just kept it, um, left it alone and left the crack in there. There was no television or radio at this time, so if something important was happening, they would ring this really loud bell in Philadelphia so people would know what's going on um, in our country. And they would gather together. And on the 8th, which is four days after the Declaration of Independence was signed, um, somebody stood probably at a podium and read it to the group of people that gathered there so they knew what was going on in our country in the latest news. So anything that was important, that bell would ring, and it's still in Philadelphia today, and you can take a look at it. All right. Memorable moments. Memorable moments. Finally. Janet and her family explored Franklin Court. This is where Benjamin Franklin lived and worked. Franklin was one of the writers of the Declaration of Independence. He also helped frame the Constitution. To remember their visit, the Changs mailed a postcard from Franklin's post office. I'll never forget this day, Janet said. Table. Visit Philadelphia. Famous place why it is cool. Famous place, the National Constitution Center. Why it is cool. It explains the rules that were created for our nation. One area tells of the right to say what you want and the right to vote. Famous place, Independence Hall. Why it is cool. This is where the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were written. You can see the chair that George Washington sat in as he signed the Constitution. Famous place, Betsy Ross House. Why it is cool. It is said that Betsy Ross made the first American flag. You can tour her home to see how she lived and worked. All right, friends, something that I know I was confused about when I was in second grade is Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin was a very important part of our American history. He was known as one of the founding fathers, which means um, he helped kind of create um, create America as it was first being born, first being declared independent. 
he was not a president of the United States. And I think that confuses us a little bit because he is on our money. And most people who are on money, we've learned in math class, are previous presidents. Benjamin Franklin is on the $100 bill. He was not a president, but he was very important to American history, did many important things, including help write that Declaration of Independence. Very intelligent man who helped shape our country. So I wanted to make sure I made that clear because I always thought that when you were on the money, you had to be a president, and that's not the case with Benjamin Franklin. So taking a look at making connections, what is one rule of our country? And I know that back here, I saw the word opinion. One new rule was that people could state their opinion, tell their feelings and how they feel. And Mrs. Reeves has told you about their other countries that you know, you would mail something and they would black out what you had said because you weren't allowed to talk about certain things or they would take your mail and not ever mail it. So being able to have your own opinion and your own thoughts is something that our founding fathers felt was very important. And that is a rule of our country. And why did they feel it was important? I think because um, in England and in other countries, you weren't allowed to have your own opinion. You had to do whatever the monarchy said and the king said. So you had to follow the king's rules, whether you agreed with it or not. You had to go to the church that he said to go to. You had to do things no matter how you felt about them and how you feel is your opinion. And that's why it was so important for our country to be able to have their own thoughts and opinions. How is this rule the same or different from your school rules at school? Well, this is a text to self connection. Um, you're always welcome to have your own opinion as long as you respect other people's opinions when they share their opinion. So it is very similar at school. Um, I think that's all I have to say about that, but I did want to talk to you about cause and effect. And real quickly, right here, I stated in another video, it's kind of hard, cause and effect. A cause is an event that makes something happen. Whatever happened first is the cause, and the event that happens because of it is the effect. For example, in the story, on page 391, the Chang family visits Philadelphia, and that cause is what happened first. The effect is they get to see so many historic places because they did that. Okay, they saw the Liberty Bell, they saw Benjamin Franklin, they mailed something from the post office, so they wouldn't have been able to see those historic places if first they didn't visit Philadelphia. So they go together, the cause and effect. Ask your brain when they ask, when anyone asks about cause and effect in a story, what happened first? What had to happen first? Not necessarily the order that the sentence states, but what happened first? I gave you the example earlier. We had to stay in for recess because it was raining. Well, first, it had to have rained to cause the effect of us having indoor recess. So it's not necessarily what happens first in the sentence, but what happens first between the two cause and effect. Okay, it's kind of like the what and the why. But that is all I have for you today, guys. Go ahead and fill out your exit ticket. I'll take a look and give you some feedback on that a little later today. Thanks, everyone. Love you guys. Bye.